LinkedIn now allowing users to show stay at home parent in their job titles. The company saying it will later add features to reflect parental leave, family care, and also sabbatical options as well. Akiko, these are all really relevant details within the context of that flexible work pre-pandemic work arrangements that we find ourselves in right now. But, you know, I mean, we were just talking before the break, like this probably isn't going to solve the stigma that's also associated around, you know, stay at home parents that would prefer not to be in the office. Well, uh, the thinking for LinkedIn being here that that we have all learned a new appreciation, right, for working moms, number one. But some moms just struggle to juggle it all. I mean, you've talked about this in the labor force, how many women dropped out. And so this is at least LinkedIn's way to sort of acknowledge that it is okay to have a bit of a break in your career. If you are a stay-at-home mom, if you've opted to quit your job as well. I mean, I just wonder how employees still see that though, because there has been a stigma attached for a very long time for right. women who say, I'm going to take time off because I, I want to take care of my kids. Nothing wrong with that, but it's not seen as a full-time job. And that's the challenge, like you said. I mean, there's all these kind of jokes online about how whenever, you know, a person is interviewing for a job, in many cases, you know, moms that took breaks to take care of the kids, uh, dads in some cases as well. And, you know, an interviewer will look at the resume and say, can you explain this vacancy or this this gap? What did the, you do yeah, what were you during doing? There's that a gap, gap during this time in your, in your, resume. In your resume. And yeah. then the person will go... I wasn't working. I mean, what more is there for me to say? So at least I think LinkedIn is trying to use that as a way to perhaps plug that hole or add more context to that because the idea is hopefully employers will be a little bit more welcoming to that. But, you know, look, it's a little bit different than just having this label and then actually getting these people. Well, it, and this got us thinking this morning. If women, and we're talking about stay-at-home moms, were to be paid a salary, how much would that salary add up to? And, and it's a right. pretty varying one here, but we're going to go with the highest one because why not give moms a credit? Salary.com says $184,820 to be exact. By the way, the way they calculate this is the number of hours worked, the number of roles they would take on in a, you know, in a typical yep. company. So a we're talking about paid, CFO. Yeah chief operating officer as well. And by the way, that number, it's double what it was last year. So at least there's an increasing understanding of the load that women have to take on in raising kids at home. Right, but as we've been kind of talking about, acknowledgement is very different than, you know, companies and HR teams acknowledging that this is something they need to make up for, for example. Uh, if, for example, someone takes a, a leave and then comes back, right? The whole idea around paid leave versus non-paid leave, I think that there's this kind of shift that's happening. And because of the work flexibility, where a lot of stay-at-home moms right now who have continued to stay employed but don't have to be in the office anymore, there's a, a compensation that they're now having to, to juggle within the time, the time that they have to juggle for both of yeah. those tasks, but then also whether or not they're being paid for that as well. Well, and also one, you know, one last thing to add to that, there's people who have had to raise their kids full time and also work full time at home. Yeah. Super we know one person on sure. our team, right? We do. We yes. do.